Carey Show. <laughs> have you, have you. And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. The place, Melrose Springs. The time, a Saturday morning in April, 1951. On this fateful morning, a great decision has just been made by one of the town's leading citizens, Honest Harold. That's right. This is the day. I'm going to clean out our cellar. <laughs> Certainly is an awful mess down there. Let's see. I'll carry out all those old newspapers and bottles... Burn all that old trash. Wonder if that old moose head will go in the incinerator. And I'll carry out all those boxes of ashes, mop the floor, wash the windows, Ugh, lug out that old washing machine. Wow, sounds like quite a job. Maybe I'd better get little Marvin to help me. Marvin! Well, hello, my boy. Hi, Harold. Marvin, you know what I'm going to do this morning? What's that? I'm going to clean out the cellar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> going to be a lot of fun, rummaging around through those old magazines and things. <laughs> Say, would you like to help me, Marvin? <laughs> <laughs> I said, would you like to help me, Marvin? Heard you. <laughs> oh, well, I just thought today being Saturday and if you aren't doing anything. Well, it's such a nice day. Some of us kids were going out to the picnic grounds at Bear Lake. Oh? Huh? Well, do you have to go picnicking today? I should get outdoors. You know what you always say. I'm just a growing boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can grow in the cellar. Mushrooms do. <laughs> Gee, Harold. Well, all right, Marvin. If you want to run off, fritter away the day, having a good time while I'm here cleaning the cellar all by myself, it's okay with me. Go right ahead. Okay, I will. Oop. So long, Harold. <laughs> what a sneaky thing to do. Oh, well. Say, I'll bet Mother will help me. She could sort out the papers and magazines and keep me company down there. It's awful dark. Mother! What is it, Harold? Mother, I've made up my mind to clean out the cellar today. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Promised myself I'd do it, and a promise made is a debt unpaid. Oh, did you make that up, Harold? No, I read it on a loan company blotter. <laughs> Mother, I was just wondering, and um, I thought maybe you could give me a little, uh, a little... Oop. Mother, what's that? Why, it's Mr. Walker. Oh, my goodness, that ancient mariner boyfriend of yours. He's come over to see me in this tractor. Tractor? Whoa, Nelly! <laughs> Sounds like Gene Autry meeting Hopalong Cassidy. Look at him coming up the walk, Harold. Uh -huh. Doesn't he look handsome in his Palm Beach suit? Yeah. Looks more like something that was washed up on the beach. <laughs> oh, my head. Harold. Look at that. Why doesn't he stop showing off? Come in, Ogilby. Ogilby. Give a cheer, Walker's here. <laughs> Horny, can you get? Uh, hello, Ogilvy. No, oh, hello, Mrs. Hemp. <laughs> <laughs> hello, brother. Oh, hello, crooner. Yes. I heard you sing on your radio program this morning. I didn't sing on the radio this morning. Well, I heard something that sounded like you. Uh. Guess it was a hog calling contest in Charlieville. <laughs> hey, now oh, look here, you. <laughs> I was only Josh and Sonny. Yeah. Of course. 
Harold is cleaning out the cellar this morning. Well, how's everything feeling down cellar, Sonny? How's the cold been? <laughs> That's very good. Uh. <laughs> Mother, since I'm going to clean out the cellar, I, I was going to ask you if you'd... Oh, I was going to ask you something myself, Emily. <laughs> What's that, Ogilvy? Well, it's such a nice day, just thought you might like to go out to the picnic grounds with me. Oop. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I'd love to go. That is, Harold, if you don't want me to help you clean the cellar. Help me? No, you go right ahead, Mother. Oh, all right. Oh, well, shall I make some sandwiches? No, I brought our lunch. Mm -hmm. I didn't want you to soil your fair white hands, my lady. <laughs> <laughs> Be your so gallant. No, shucks. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> well, shall we get started? Hey, you better wear a hat, ma'am. It's a little blowy on the tractor today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I have it right here. I'm all ready, Ogilvy. All right, Emily. Take my arm and we'll go out and join the birds and bees at the picnic ground. <laughs> I hope he gets ants in his potato salad. <laughs> Goodbye, Mother. Have a good time, if possible. Too bad you're not going, Sonny. I'll save an olive pit for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder what Mother sees in that laughing hyena. Well, I better get started at the cellar. Go down there right now, and if that's Walker again, I'll... Hello, Harry. Oh, hello, Doc. Howdy, boy. Pete, come on in, fellas. Okay, boy. Watch out while I get this fishing pole through the door. And I got a pail of worms. Yeah, we're going fishing, Harold. No kidding. Yes, sir, out to Bear Lake. I got on my old fishing clothes. Yeah, you sure have. Think I'll open a window. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop by to see if you wanted to go with us, Harold. Huh? Well, I'm sorry, fellas, but not today. I promised myself to clean out the cellar, and I'm going to do it. Oh, sure, that's too bad, boy. <laughs> We're playing hooky, Harold. Just like a couple of kids. Don't I look just like Huckleberry Finn? You look more like Mickey Finn. <laughs> now, Harold. Okay, Doc. It, say, uh, Harold, could I use your phone for a minute? The phone? Sure, it's right there. Yeah, thanks. I want to call my girl Eloise Zeigenfuss. <laughs> oh, not that again. <laughs> I do declare that girl has got me gaga. <laughs> yeah, she sure has. <laughs> Oh, hello, Eloise. This is Pete. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you can't go with us today, honey bunch. Are you going to miss me today, Eloise? <laughs> oh, aren't they cute, Harold? Yeah, cute. She sounds like the bottom of an ice cream soda. <laughs> Eloise, I I'm coming over to see you tonight. We'll sit in the parlor and hold hands. Would you like that? <laughs> Goodbye, Eloise. <laughs> oh, what a girl. Yeah, she's a doll. Well, Pete, we'd better be getting out to Bear Lake, huh? Okay. Well, goodbye, Harold. I'm sorry you're not coming with us. Well, well you don't want to change your mind, Harold. I bet the catfish are really biting. No, thanks, fellas. I got a job to do, and I'm going to do it. Yeah, all right. Uh, come on, Tom Sawyer. Okay, <laughs> Huckleberry Finn. Yeah, yeah, that that good old summer time. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> the poor man's Lum and Abner. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like I'm the only one staying home today. Guess it'll be kind of nice out at the picnic grounds. I'd like to go, too. But I said I was going to clean out that cellar, and by George, I'm going to... Oh, my goodness. Grand Central Station. Now, who's that? Come in. Hello, Harold. Well, hello, Flora Bell. Come in. Thank you. Well, what brought you here on this fine morning? A bus? Oh, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice day. I just thought you and I might go on a little old picnic. <laughs> Everybody's going. I know it, Flora Bell, and I'd like to go too, but I promised myself I'd clean out the cellar today. On such a beautiful day, you're going to be fussing around in that dusty cellar knee-deep in citronella bottles. <laughs> I turned those in. 
Now, I, I just believe when you make up your mind to do something, you, you should do it. My, I do admire you, Harold. You do? Yes. Nothing can move you when you've made your mind up, you great big block of granite, you. <laughs> We could be strolling arm in arm while the robins are chirping their love songs and all nature is dating and mating. Dating and mating. But you'll be down in the cellar doing your job. I will? Mm, then we'd go canoeing on the lake. Mm -hmm. You'd sing me a love song and play a ukulele. Uh-huh. Harold, since you're not going with me, I wonder if you'd sing something for me before I go. Now? Yes. So when I'm on the picnic all alone, I'll have your memory while I'm munching my luncheon. <laughs> well, all right. I'll sit on the piano bench with you. We'll make believe we're in a canoe. All right. You row and I'll sing. <laughs> oh, I can play this. <clears throat> oh, for just the chance to love you. Would I love you, love you, love you To take you in my arms Has always been my goal Sure as there's a moon above you Would I love you, love you, love you with all my heart and soul With all my heart and soul You ask me would I love you If you left me Eyes that see your eyes that know Would I love you What a question when I'm yearning so Oh, for just the chance to love you Would I love you, love you, love you To take you in my arms Has always been my goal Sure as there's a moon above you would I love you, love you, love you With all my heart and soul With all my heart and soul Ah, oh, that was beautiful Thanks I'd better be going so you can get down to your cellar. That's what you think. Come on, Florabelle. We'll munch on that lunch together. <laughs> we will return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. A little later on CBS this evening, Gary Crosby will be his father's guest on the Bing Crosby Show. Also on CBS this evening, we'll bring you the Johnny Bratton, Don Williams fight from Detroit. This bout and the Bing Crosby Show will be heard on most of these same CBS stations. And now, back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. <laughs> Well, this was the day Honest Harold made up his mind to clean out the cellar. Being a man of willpower, did he let his friends talk him into postponing the job and going on a picnic? No. And when the lovely Florabelle tried to charm him into taking her on the picnic, did this man of iron give in? Quiet, don't tell him everything. <laughs> <laughs> so we find Florabelle and Harold just arriving at beautiful Bear Lake. Isn't the lake pretty, Harold? Yeah, sure is. As blue as your eyes. Mm. Oh, there's Dr. Yancey and Pete the Marshal. Oh, brother, I was afraid of that. Yoo-hoo, Dr. Yancey, Pete. 
Flora Bell. Well, I do declare. Look who's here. Well, hello, Harold. <laughs> and Flora Bell. Hello, boys. Yeah, hello, boys. Hey, Harold, I thought you were going to stay home today and clean out the cellar. Well, uh, <laughs> did you find her down there, boy? <laughs> okay, Pete. Uh, you wouldn't come with us, Harold. I guess we're not as pretty as Flora Bell. You can say that again. <laughs> You want me to? Yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. Now, why don't you fellas run along and fish, huh? Why, hello, Harold. Well, hello, Mother. Hey, hi there, Sonny. Uh, Mr. Walker, the talker. Yeah. You sure came up all that cellar in a hurry. What's the matter? Get the bins? <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, my boy. Say, I'm getting hungry. Can we eat now? Of course, Dr. Yancey. We'll roast the hot dogs right now. Will you light the fire, Harold? Oh, sure. Anybody got a match? Harold, hmm? why don't you light the fire the way you used to? You know, when you're an old woodsman. An old woodsman? <laughs> Remember? You told me you never used a match. You made a spark by hitting two flint rocks together. Well, uh, yeah, this I gotta see. Go right ahead, Dan Raboon. <laughs> Well, I, I, I would, but uh, I guess there aren't any flint rocks around here. Too bad. <laughs> here they are, Harold. <laughs> My own flesh and blood, too. Well, thanks very much, Marvin. <laughs> well, go ahead, boy. We're watching. Huh? Well, all right, Pete. Now, just hit these two rocks together like this. <laughs> Maybe they're a little wet. I'll try it again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need a new wick, Harry. <laughs> Maybe you better check your fluid, boy. <laughs> Smart Alex. <coughs> hey, your face is awful red, Sonny. You must be done on one side. <laughs> done on one side. <laughs> Ugh, the things I get myself into. Well, I'll try it once more. Look, you started the fire. I did? Well. Well, I'll be darned. Why, Harold, you're wonderful. It's really burning. Yeah, and so is Mr. Walker. This is certainly pretty nice, isn't it, Flora Bell? Mm. Sitting here on the beach all by ourselves. Oh, yes. You sure look cute in your new bathing suit. You like the color, Harold? Salmon pink. Yeah. Never saw a salmon that looked like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> you like my bathing suit, Flora Bell? It's kind of daring, too. Shows my knees. <laughs> Number on the back, 367. Well, that's my locker number at the YMCA. Uh, well, should we take a little dip? Oh, it's so early in the season. That water looks awfully cold. Cool. That's nonsense. There's nothing to it. The trick is to run in and get wet all over. Now, you watch me. Here I go. Come on, Flora Bell. All right. <sighs> uh, well, maybe I'd better put my toe in first. <laughs> Boo! Yeah. Well, no use rushing the season <laughs> Guess it's a little too cold for you <laughs> Well, we can just relax on the sand All right Remember how we used to dig tunnels in the sand, Flora Bell? Watch out, I'm going to dig one over your way <laughs> <laughs> Well, Harold, you're a wonderful digger Yeah <laughs> You bet, they used to call me the mole of Melrose High. <laughs> Here I come. Dig, 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 dig. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you go till you give me a little kiss. Well, just one now, you hear? Well, one at a time. <laughs> hello, you two. <laughs> oh, hello, Gloria. Oh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, no, I always dig in the sand like this. <laughs> Well, what's our little switchboard operator doing way out here at Big Bear Lake? Oh, I always come out here on Saturday. Oh? Uh -huh. You like to swim, Gloria? No, but I like the lifeguard. 
lifeguard. Uh-huh. Gee, he's cute. I met him two weeks ago when my water wings broke. Oh? Uh, today he promised to teach me the Australian crawl. The what? Oh, gee, I'd like to crawl to Australia with him. <laughs> <laughs> the bathhouse and put on my bathing suit. All right, see you later. Hope your lifeguard shows up. So do I. And, oh, Harold, if you hear me calling for help, don't answer. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> hey, Gloria is a cute little kid, huh? Falling for a lifeguard like that. Imagine. <laughs> yes. Hmm? <laughs> Where were we? Oh, yes, I'm just about to steal a little... Harold, mm -hmm. there's that lifeguard coming down the beach. You see him? Oh, yeah. Mm, my, isn't he attractive, Harold? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't do anything to me. <laughs> you care for a root beer drop? What a wonderful physique. <laughs> oh, look at that tan. Why, he looks like he stepped... <laughs> he looks like he stepped right off a bottle of skull. Yeah. Wish he'd have stayed on there. <laughs> Florida, let's go back, huh? Oh, he's looking over here, Harold. Goody, goody. <laughs> Why doesn't he go away? Oh, my goodness. Now he's walking on his hands. Beach athlete. Oh, now, Harold. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at him. Now he's turning flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody ought to throw him a fish. <laughs> Come on, let's ignore him for a bit. Oh, uh, hello. I, I didn't see you folks there. Yeah, I didn't see you folks there. Oh, hello. Hi. My, you're quite an acrobat doing all those tricks and things. Oh, it wasn't so much. Oh, yes, it was. Oh, no, it wasn't. You're right, it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, lifeguard, we don't want to keep you from your work, you know. Guess you're pretty busy on the beach picking up Dixie cups and things. Oh, I'm not working now. Uh, I'm on my lunch hour. Glad I'm not drowning. <laughs> How about taking a swim? You folks been in the water yet? Well, I had my toe in. I mean, uh, the water's still a little cold. A little too early in the season for me. Well, then I guess you won't mind if uh, this young lady and I go swimming. Huh? Well, it's a little early in the season for her, too. Oh, well, I don't think it's so early in the season. It's but... almost May. Before we know it, it'll be June, then July. I better hurry up and get in the water or the summer will be over. Mm. <laughs> Short summer. Floor bell. Come on, honey, I'll race you in. All right. Oh, Harold, will you sit on my quick magazine so it doesn't blow away? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what uh, Look at him. Showing off. Mr. America. Bet he looks terrible in clothes. If there was some way I could show up that muscle-bound beachcomber. So I bet if I jumped off that high diving tower there, it would impress Floor bell. Looks awfully high. What the heck? Once I get up there, all I've got to do is fall off. All right, George, I'll do it. What's this? Oh, that darn magazine is stuck to me. Well, I got it all off with the cover. Sure looks like a high climb up there. Well, here goes. I'll open my eyes now and take a look down at the... Yelp! <laughs> People look like ants down there. The ant with a Panama hat must be Charlie Walker. <laughs> Better stop looking down. I'm getting dizzy. <sighs> Better get this over. I'll just work my way out there. <clears throat> Diving board isn't very wide. <sighs> Better call Flora Bell and tell her to watch me jump before I weaken. Zoink. Board shaking. See spots before my eyes. Oh, those are seagulls. <laughs> Go away, birds. <laughs> Flora Bell. Flora. Oop. She and Muscles are getting out of the water. <sighs> They're walking up the beach the other way. Well, no use diving now. They won't see me. Might as well go back down. I'll just turn around on this diving board. Zoof, I'm slipping. Oh, Geronimo! Oh! What a 
picnic. Should have stood in the cellar. Oh, hello, little chipmunk. You all alone, too? Hmm. He's got a lower plate wobble. <laughs> little chipmunk, you want to come and sit on this log with me? <laughs> I'm not even popular with chipmunks. Gosh, I'm hungry, but I'll be darned if I'll go back to that picnic and have everybody laugh at me. Hi, Harold. Oh, hello, Marvin. I've been looking all over for you, Harold. Huh? I thought you might be hungry, so I brought you some hot dogs. Oh, thanks a lot, Marvin. Gee, Harold, why are you sitting over here all by yourself? Why don't you come back and join the picnic? Well, it's a long story, my boy. Someday, when you're a little older, I'll explain to you about women. Okay. I missed you this afternoon, Harold. You did? Well, little Marvin, we don't need women, do we? Heck no. What do I need them for? Yeah. <laughs> well, believe me, Marvin, I'm through with them. Sure. I'll take friends I can depend on, like you. Uh, uh, hey! Choo! Harold, I better hmm? run back and get you some hot coffee. Yeah, all right, my boy. Be right back. Yeah, there's a fine friend. He's not as fickle as a certain... Hello, Harold. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Breckenridge. Harold, I've been looking all over for you. You have? What happened to Jungle Jim? <laughs> oh, uh, you mean that lifeguard? Oh, Harold, you're not jealous of him. Jealous? Of course not. <laughs> I could never like a fella like that. He may be big and brawny, but you have a mind. I got a mind never to speak to you again. <laughs> oh, Harold. That lifeguard was fun, but for steady company, a girl likes a man with a high IQ. Huh? And I IQ, too. <laughs> well, isn't that cute? Harold. Will you forgive your Flora Bell for taking that little dip? Where'd you take him? Oh, dip! <laughs> Harold? Yeah? Why don't we kiss and make up? Kiss? All right. You know Flora Bell. I, I, Q, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> heard the Harold Carey Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Parley Bear, Shirley Mitchell, Cliff Arquette, Stuffy Singer, Peter Leeds, Dave Light, and featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Norman McDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. It was pretty too, wasn't it? Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. Good jokes, fellas. Tomorrow... Thursday, April 19th, General Douglas MacArthur will address a joint session of Congress, and his address will be carried by most of these same CBS stations. Be listening to CBS when, this Thursday, tomorrow, General MacArthur speaks to Congress at 30 minutes past noon, Eastern Standard Time. Stay tuned now for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. Bob Lamont speaking. The CBS, where you thrill to suspense on Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.